Good evening and welcome to the Financial Week. I'm Andrew Laidley. St. Catherine Northeast MP Leslie Campbell has raised concerns about the amount of money the government is pumping into the cannabis industry to meet international requirements, with no real guarantee that products from ganja will be sold in export markets. Mr. Campbell raised the issue as Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, PAAC, examined the revised budget on Wednesday. TVJ's Dashan Hendricks reports. I'm concerned that we are having this massive investment in, in cannabis. That's the Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Northeastern, Leslie Campbell, during Wednesday's meeting of the Public Administration and Appropriations Committee as members grilled the Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries about its expenditure as a part of the examination of the revised budget tabled recently. Mr. Campbell's concern was raised after the Permanent Secretary's observation that $40 million was being allocated to the Cannabis Licensing Authority, CLA, to purchase a track and a trace system. This is a first tranche of what is supposed to be costing maybe $3, three? $338 million so that the cannabis industry can be... Um, supported in terms of the legal requirement for track and trace of okay. movement of cannabis products. Mr. Campbell questioned the plan, making the case that at the moment, Jamaica is doing so to meet international standards, when for him, there is no international market for ganja products from Jamaica. The, the Canadians have encircled their, their, their so-called market. The Germans, the Israelis, and where else? And the Americans, they're laughing at us. And, and so, and we, we, we're locked out, we, we can't bank our money or anything. And I'm just, what good sense is there behind us doing all this tracking to meet international obligations and we can't get into the markets overseas? Do we have something that we can deal with locally to meet all standards without throwing all this money? But the permanent secretary had a different view. It, it would appear to me, Mr. Chairman, that the level of investment that we're seeing concurrent with the amount of license issue indicate that the players would have had to identify markets. The business of the track and trace is really to satisfy the legal requirement. I mean, an international standard. He said the country cannot develop the ganja industry without monitoring, given that the product is still illegal in many countries. He also said that export regulations for those intending to sell abroad will be developed early in the new fiscal year, which begins on April 1. Dashan Hendricks, TVJ News. The National Commercial Bank Financial Group is reporting another year of record profit. The company which held its annual general meeting today is ranked as the largest financial conglomerate in the Caribbean. Our group reported net profits of $30.7 billion with $29.6 billion attributable to our shareholders, representing a 6% or $1.6 billion increase over the prior year. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our highest annual performance as at May 2019, half our assets are outside Jamaica, while 30% of our 2019 operating revenues were generated from these overseas territories, up from 10% in the prior year. Currency trading ended today with the U.S. dollar selling for $141.22. The Canadian dollar closed at $106.63. The pound is being sold for $184.63, while the euro is selling for $154.98. The JC index gained 1,697 points today, while the junior market index declined by 29 points. Among the winners were Productive Business Solutions, Access Financial Services, Epley Caribbean Property Fund, Siboney Group, and Knoxford Express Services. Now on the losing side were Radio Jamaica, Derman Trading, Medical Disposables and Supplies, Paramount Trading, and Honey Bun. And that's the Financial Week. I'm Andrew Lately. Good evening.